So this is actually our axle that we have bought right here that we were looking at. So once we're finished, they're gonna ship this to us and we're gonna put this into the first, one of the first trucks we're building. So people have been always asking, what about sticking electric axles on a trailer? This is an example of an electric axle on a trailer. Give you a little bit of extra hold back, a little bit of extra pushing, just kind of electrifies the trailer. But here is a real life example of that. All right, so we're just doing a little tour of this factory here. This is where the semi-truck e-axles are being manufactured. Okay, we get a lot of questions on what do you do on an electric vehicle if it breaks down and I need to tow it. On a normal vehicle, you have to pull the drive shaft out. This vehicle has a neutral feature. You can engage neutral in the axle and you can tow it. So you just go into the vehicle, you hit neutral, no drive shafts to remove, no laying on the side of the road. And as a backup, if say the vehicle loses its, all of its electrical power and it won't shift into neutral, you can move this mechanical, you undo these four bolts, you take the cover off, and you can manually shift this into neutral. It's now in tow mode, back to drive mode. So you don't have to pull the drive shaft. Even if you lose power, you just flick that over, you put it into neutral, tow it down the road, no problem. I think that is absolutely incredible compared to a lot of the E-axes on the market where you have to pull the whole hub shafts out. Yeah, so this is really exciting because they've now put the electric motors on the steer axles as well. Um, without any connection to the side. So you can have your frame rails and that's it. Nothing in the middle, nothing underneath. So that gives you the option to go super low as well. Um, so uh, to see the technology evolve into all the different platforms is very exciting. Okay, so we did the little tour of the factory, seen the axles, seen our axles, very impressed with the design. Then we went, had a little lunch, and now we're just back in the meeting room and we're gonna be discussing the engineering behind it, we're talking about the pickup axles and just seeing what we can get done. All right, so this was an absolutely great meeting. We were able to see the axles, see them being tested, look at the design, look at the internals of them. I'm very, very happy with these axles. I think they're a major step forward. We are able to talk about future needs. They even showed us some of their cool product, independent front steering, so you could have independent front steering on a semi-truck with airbags that has power for off-road conditions, snow, ice. There's just some amazing products here. We've got a lot of work done. This is a great visit. I can't wait to leave here, have them ship us our axles and get to work on these trucks now. point for the computer. So this I'm guessing is the rear. There's yeah each one has the connection point. Yeah. How do you feel about heights? Oh, I'm okay with heights. Yeah. Whoa Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> yeah, and then there's the top. And they're looking down at us like we're cousins. <laughs> Holy cow. Ooh, that's a lot of wasted space. We've rented, uh, could have been made. All right, so today's our last day, but uh, we've got an opening until 2 in the afternoon, and Chase and Eric and Ray are meeting with the generator people. Super important meeting. 
But uh, it's a lot of technical mumbo jumbo that uh, we probably can't contribute a whole lot to. So Aaron here found the factory for the Caterpillar and Perkins engines, uh, the, specifically the gensets in Wishu, which is a 40 minute high speed train ride away. And we're basically just going to the factory and hoping to make a connection because uh, as much as we don't want to admit it, everything is made in China. So even the Caterpillar and the uh, Perkins engines that we thought were made in UK are also made here. So we're going to go see if we can uh, uh, inspect the plant, see the process, see if we can make a deal on a bulk order. We're showing up unannounced, more or less. Uh, we couldn't really find a phone number. Uh, so we, we put on our best attire to look like Canadian businessmen looking to buy a bulk order of Caterpillar engines or Perkins engines, whatever. We, we really don't care. They're just painted different color. So uh, this should be a really interesting day. All right, so we were denied entry by two different security booths. They flat out said, no, we don't do that. So on to plan B, which is just randomly talking to people on their lunch break. Uh, they get two hours for siesta. We see some people walking around, so we're just gonna use Google Translate and see if we can get somebody to tell us where we need to go or who to talk to. Because if we can just get a phone number today, it will be a good day. We just need that right phone number. So here we go. We stopped for lunch and I gave the business card info to Sunny, who is our liaison at Brogan, which would be our Chinese broker. And we have a meeting with Perkins at our hotel tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. This... I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I think that that was well worth the walk and that business in China is on a whole different level. Like you don't get the service, you don't get the treatment, you don't get a lot of the respect. They just want to do business with you and they'll bend over backwards to make it happen. And uh, it's just really impressive to deal with the people and experience the different culture, whether it be food, whether it be family or whether it just be business while we're visiting China. It's really impressive. All right, so we just finished our two week trip in China. Uh, we met with our battery suppliers, our pickup axle supplier, semi truck supplier, generator, and in motor. In inverters. Inverters? Yeah, the three in one. And then we ended up finding an engine, a possible engine solution as well. So our meetings aren't quite done yet. We leave tomorrow afternoon. We got, I've got a meeting in the morning yet with uh, Perkins. And then Eric's got to go check out a battery. Um, manufacturer as well. Just a really cool experience and I can't believe how much we got done. Um, it's a work trip. We squeezed a couple days of fun in there. We probably walked, I'm estimating somewhere between 50 and 60,000 steps. At least. My feet are very, very sore, but uh, I think we have a really good idea going forward and uh, a good plan for this upcoming year that will keep all of us really busy. But more importantly, the frame rails for the next few trucks have been ordered. Oh, They nice. have been shipped out. They should be here at the end of June. Nice. Um, those axles that we visited in the factory are getting loaded up onto a shipping container at the end of this week, getting shipped over to us. They should also be here at the end of June. Nice. So we'll start being able to build the next few trucks here. Awesome. And uh, we're still friends, right? I think so. Okay. All right, good. Yeah, we survived two weeks together, so <laughs> I know. that's pretty good. And, and I only met Ray on this trip and um, met these guys for one dinner and half a day the following day and we're still friends after a couple of weeks hanging together non-stop. It's honestly, so. I've, I've had a blast hanging out with you. It's yeah. been fantastic and this is gonna be a great partnership. I, uh, this is absolutely, the boss and Edison is gonna be a great partnership going forward. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it at that. Here we go. Cheers. 
If you enjoyed our Edison Motors video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that notification bell for more updates and follow us on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram.